What is the darkest, most disgusting secret in your past? NSFW NSFL. I killed a man in Laos. A robber. I didn't mean to. Hid his body and everything. I'm going to ducking hell. When I was a child, I lived in a foster home. I had my own room. With the TV and every day I came home from school and watched Fox's Fun House. Had me a crush on MR. JD. Roth. One day another girl came and moved into my room. I wouldn't have minded except she was mean and controlling and wouldn't let me watch my beloved show. One day she told me that her mom actually lived a few blocks away from our house. And I convinced her to run away. I didn't realize at the time that runaways ended up getting sent to a group home. I just knew that I wanted her gone. It's been almost 20 years since that happened and I still feel terrible. I hope she is okay. Four years ago I found my girlfriend on the floor of her bathroom after having shot herself. We were pretty much inseparable for quite a few years. So people tend to bring up whatever happened to her a lot. Because of that. I actually have a somewhat elaborate lie that I tell people so I don't have to tell them the truth. When I was in the 6th grade, there was a girl in my class named Gina who was horrible to me. She constantly made fun of me. I was a shy, bookish girl, and once even had a birthday party and invited everyone in my class except for me. In the 6th grade we had a project called Egg Babies. Basically we all got a hard boiled egg that we had to treat like a baby, make a little nest basket for it and take care of it. We weren't supposed to even leave it out of our sight. The idea being to teach us responsibility. Apparently our class was deeing around too much with the egg babies. So our teacher told us that at the end of the week, if our egg was cracked, we would get an F. One day while the class was out at recess, I was allowed to come back into the classroom to get my inhaler. Gina had left her egg inside the classroom. I looked around, then walked over to her egg, and tapped it on the desk, breaking the bottom. Then I put it back in her basket and went back out to recess. Gina ended up failing the project because her egg was broken. She was really pissed off. I never told anyone, and I still don't regret it. Duck you, Gina. In 3rd grade, I cheated on my history exam. In 4th grade, I stole my Uncle Max's toupee and I glued it on my face when I was Moses in my Hebrew school play. In 5th grade, I knocked my sister Edie down the stairs and I blamed it on the dog as when my mom sent me to the summer camp for fat kids and then they served lunch I went nuts and I pigged out and they kicked me out us but the worst thing I ever done oh sir I mixed a pot of fake puke at home and then I went to this movie theater. Hid the puke in my jacket, climbed up to the balcony and then, then, I made a noise like this, hua 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 oh sir and then I dumped it over the side, all over the people in the audience, and then, this was horrible, all the people started getting sick and throwing up all over each other, I never felt so bad in my entire life. When I was a kid I went to jump off a diving board and I slipped on one side pretty much landing on my V in a side ward split. There was a ton of blood and I only had a small tiny cut down there. I'm pretty positive my hymen broke because of it but I never talked to my mom about it after it happened. Sorry to be insensitive. But losing your virginity to the diving board is pretty ducking rad. Well when you put it that way it makes me sound like the town whore. It shoved a diving board up there. Went to my friends at age 8 or so he said dude you gotta try this dog milk it is delicious. He then proceeds to suck his dog off until it comes in his mouth. Lost a good friend that day. Here is one that comes to mind. When I was around 6 or 7, me and my friend would always walk across this old ratty driving range as a shortcut to get home from school. There was almost always a few jackrabbits running around. And we would attempt to hit them with golf balls. Always unsuccessfully. Finally one day I let one loose and with a very audible crack I hit it directly in the head. It instantly fell over on its side and started to use its legs to push itself in large circles. Imagine Homer laying on his side and using his legs to run in circles. I was immediately filled with dread and we ran over to see the thing. A numb desperation in its eyes. Large amounts of blood pouring from its ear as it was running circle after circle until it finally exhausted itself. It then laid there, staring up in the sky with its dumb, red eyes, dying. I looked over at my friend teary-eyed, and said we should put it out of its misery. He nodded, 
In our grief and young stupidity we could not think of any way to accomplish this but by the way I had inflicted the initial wound. So we stood there, sobbing as hard as people can sob, as we ineffectually slammed down golf balls at this poor creature. I finally wised up after a few minutes and grabbed a rock, but to this very day I still think about that ducking jackrabbit. I had a little 2 centimeters sticker photo I got printed out at the seaside. It was a picture of me smiling. I used to get completely naked and stick it on the head of my D. Flaxid. I would then move my foreskin up and consume the picture. Once everything was set I'd run out my room and find the first family member I could. They'd look at me and I'd shout where is he then they would respond in some fashion and I would reply here he is whilst furiously retracting my foreskin to expose the sticker. Dark times. When I was about 7 or 8, my grandmother, through my mother, who I'd never met came to visit. My mother had recently divorced and times were rough so her estranged mother visiting was her only bright point in recent months. Being the misfit I was, when the adults were outside I rummaged through my grandmother's things. I found a weird device that, when squeezed, shot out a puff of wet air. I now know it was a rescue inhaler. I played with it until it went empty and so it was boring. Later that day, the family was outside and my grandmother, who I assume had COPD or something, had a terrible coughing fit and collapsed to her knees. She grabbed her rescue inhaler, squeezed, and obviously nothing came out. The next thing I know, her face turned blue and her blood vessels were clearly visible from the lack of air and the coughing. Apparently the stress from the coughing fit caused a blood vessel to rupture in her head. The EMT said she was dead before she hit the ground. I have always wondered if I should tell my mother that I may have killed her mother on accident. But I'm terrified of what she might think of me. This was about 19 years ago. TL. Dr. I very likely killed my own grandmother. Edit dear edit. Your comments have made me realize that this incident was not really my fault. This one event has been a source of immense guilt for most of my life. Thanks to some helpful and professional insight I could not have gotten by talking to those close to me. It is like an immense burden has been lifted from me. Love you. Reddit. One time in college I was drinking with friends who proceeded to shame me after I passed out in their company. Besides the usual stuff. Like drawing on my face in permanent marker and pouring beer on me. They filled my ears with ketchup and mustard and I think one of them peed on me. In any case. After talking to them the next day, I figured out it was mainly the work of two guys, who were roommates. I laugh it off and pretend it didn't bother me, even though it took weeks to get all the it out of my ears. So the day everyone left for our 3 week winter break, I urinated in a thin metal tray and put it in the freezer. After it froze, I emptied it to get a solid sheet of frozen piss, and I slid it under their dorm room door. Fast forward 3 weeks. And their entire dorm room smelled like piss. And I heard their carpet was technically alive. To make it even better. Maintenance didn't get around to replacing the carpet for about a week after classes started up again. And the guys were charged damages. No one figured out how it was done. Since the only people that had access to the dorm rooms were the Raz. My freshman year of high school. I went on a trip to Disney World with the marching band. We were on our way to ride Splash Mountain when I realized that I really needed to take her it. I was too shy to ask my entire group of friends to take a bathroom break so I could poop. So I just squeezed my cheeks and hoped that I could hold it all in until someone else needed to go to the bathroom. We were about halfway there when I decided that it would be safe to squeeze out a little fart to take some of the pressure off my bowels. Worst decision ever. What either would be a tiny discreet fart turned into a full sized turd erupting into my undies. Luckily, the turd was pretty firm and dry. So it just kinda sat there, cradled in the crotch of my underwear for a few seconds. Then, with a swift adjustment of my underwear, the log just rolled out of my skirt and plopped to the ground. I looked back about 5 seconds later and the it was gone. Some park sanitation ninja must have scooped it up about as soon as it hit the ground. As far as I know, none of my friends noticed but I always wonder if at least one of them will forever remember me as that girl who is in the middle of Disney World. So, yep, I took her it in Disney World, in high school, because I was too afraid to ask my friends to stop for a bathroom break. This isn't really that dark or anything, but it is pretty hilarious. 
so my uncles all a hunt and they would go to a taxidermist and get some of the things stuffed. I was about 7 or 8, and they brought home these two huge stuffed bears. Not stuffed toys or anything, actual stuffed bears. And they were posed to stand and got set up in the playroom at my grandmother's. I don't really remember what my thought or motivation behind it was, but I have a distinct memory of sitting on the floor cross-legged, and this bear's private area was right in my face. And for whatever the ducking reason, I was like, oh it, what is that little nub? I'm going to wrap my lips around it. About 20 seconds later I realize it was a D and then freak out because I thought I was pregnant. TL. DR sucked a stuffed bear's D and thought I was pregnant. I was in the stall taking a hit after lunch in 7th grade. My friend comes into the bathroom and starts throwing paper towel into my stall. Next I hear him walk up to the urinal which is a stall away to my right. I reach into the toilet and throw one of my turds over the stalls and it smacks the ground by his foot with a nasty splat and it exploded all over his shoes and bottom of his jeans. I heard him scream then run out. I had to run out of my stall and pick the turd up with paper towel while another kid came in and saw me doing that. My hands smelt like it even after washing them three times. And my friend smelt worse. TL. DR. Threw a turd at my friend. When I was around 8 years old I would go to my pool with my brother, around 12 at the time, and he'd make me do things I didn't know were bad. I'm talking about masturbating him and stuff like that. Since I thought my brother was cool I'd do what he said to try and be like him. Once we started growing up he stopped doing it and we never spoke about it and still haven't talked about it. I'm 21 now. Then. When I was 14 or 15 I had no friends. Had never kissed a girl and had a lot of doubt about six and females. I did almost the same thing my brother did to me to my little sister who was like 8 or 9 at the time. When I started to understand what the duck I was doing I freaked out and got depressed for a few years. I have never ever talked with my sister about this either, she's 15 now. Now every ducking time I remember this I want to just shoot myself because I feel so bad for what I did. All this crap also made me disgusted of girls. In fact I didn't had a girlfriend until last year and didn't have a six until a month ago. I'd like to talk to them sometime but I don't know if anything good would come out of it. So I haven't. I'm the only person who knows this and I think it's gonna stay like that until I die. Thanks for reading. It's probably the first and only time I will ever tell anyone. P.S. Sorry if there are any mistakes. English isn't my native language. I've never told anyone this. Although if I did it wouldn't be much of a secret. This is also a throwaway and I'm probably not going to look at the comments. But just writing it even to an anonymous group of people seems relieving. Well, about two years ago an old friend of mine and I, I've known this person since just about birth, got very very drunk at a friend's party. We hadn't seen each other in ages because we both moved away from home many years ago. I had just come out of a long relationship, and she was just about to get married. Long story short, we got really drunk and ended up sleeping together. We both felt bad about it, partially because we were sort of like siblings growing up together also because she was in a long term committed relationship about one month from getting married. The month goes by and we talk occasionally but we go our separate ways. She gets married. I go about my life. One afternoon though only a month after that I'm out with some friends and a buddy from back home calls me up and tells me she committed suicide. There was no warning of anything. Everyone was completely caught by surprise. I'm obviously distraught by this since we were so close. When I drove back to my house I checked my computer and saw a message from her. She told me how she felt trapped in her relationship, and that she wasn't being honest to her husband. She said she wished we talked more, that things went differently in our lives, and that our experience had more meaning than just being some drunken mistake. She told me she cared about me deeply, it was the last thing she wrote to anyone. That hurts deep and has been like an anchor dragging on the ocean floor for the past 26 months of my life. Thank you for reading this. I have never told this to anyone. Growing up in a rough neighborhood and having to act tough to survive made me a sort of rebel. I remember walking across a street one time chewing gum when I noticed a peculiar sign that warned against littering. Thinking of myself as a badass, I spit my gum out on the street in an act of defiance against the man. When I reached the other side I heard somebody curse out, instantly knowing that they had stepped on my gum. 
I turned around and watched them struggle to pick the spent gum off their shoe. Enjoying the moment. Out of nowhere. A horn blew and I saw the speeding bus for only a moment before the pedestrian was obliterated. I left the scene. Throw away. So I was about 8 and I just figured out that grinding my D on things felt good. But I was searching for something better. I came up with this brilliant idea. I went outside and found the family dog. Took him to my room. He was a one big great Dane. He really liked ketchup. So I took a bunch and put it on my D. A few weeks later we had a daily licking session. My mama walked in on me one time. I've suddenly felt the most surreal adrenaline rush run through me with shame and embarrassment. I thought I would have received the beating of a lifetime. Instead my mom laughed uncontrollably for a few minutes as I was crying out of shame. She didn't do anything to me. But she did say when you grow up, you better have enough money to pay my rent. When I was younger, it would have been year 5 or 6 of primary school. I had this weird sorta had this gay thing with another boy. I think it was attention seeking at first. We'd kiss to gross the other kids out. Just on the cheeks. But occasionally on the lips. This all culminated in something rather strange. He was round my house. And we were kissing a bit I remember. Yep. I must be B. And I had this sleeping bag. What we did was go into my bathroom. And get into the sleeping bag together. At some point we decided that we were going to touch wheels. I remember saying I was going to get completely naked for this act. He was a bit more shy and only lowered his trousers. So we lay in the sleeping bag pressing our boners together. We did this for a minute or so when my mum knocked on the bathroom door saying she needed the toilet. The amount of time it took for me to get my clothes back on I imagine I, I was obvious something strange was up. I can only imagine my mum's face now as we both walked out awkwardly carrying a sleeping bag. I feel kinda weird about it as the boy took a turn for the worse recently. He's got some mental problem. He seems disturbed, and to this date I've never done anything with another boy. No one ever mentions my gay period in primary school. Maybe no one remembers. Or I have friends good enough to not give me it for it. First time I've ever said all this. Growing up. There was a kid a grey below me. He was kind of annoying. Always cracking bad jokes. Pretending to be a lot cooler than he actually was. The kind of kid calculated to drive a 12 year old with anger issues into a frenzy. I kind of made tormenting him my personal project. We lived in a itty neighborhood. And there were plenty of bored, angry kids who were happy to go along with it. One of them was Jerome. Looking back, the kid was a sociopath. Basically roamed the streets. Tortured bugs, pigeons, cats, probably eating a hooker's heart somewhere right now. Anyway, Jerome and I started chasing this kid after school. It started with name calling. We threw everything we could at him. He ignored it for a while. But I could tell we were getting at him. He stopped shooting back wise cracks and making goofy ass faces. He just, well, he had to shut out a lot of the world to shut us out. Part of him just went dead. One day in 1990, we saw this kid playing ball and we decided to start on him again. I grabbed his ball. When he said, give it back, Jerome took it from me. With this cold look in his eye, he took out a knife and stabbed the ball. Then he shoved the kid up against the wall. Started whispering about what he was going to do. Me and the other kids were freaked out, muttering for Jerome to cuss it out, but it was scary as hell. Jerome actually has his knife on the kid's throat, and then something just happened. The kid jerks, and knocks the knife away, and he flattens Jerome with one punch. Months of anger start pouring out of him and he pummels and pummels Jerome. And we just watch. Jerome went unconscious early on, just this ragged animal gasping as his face got turned to hamburger. Finally, we pulled off him. Jerome went to the hospital, never came back to school, will disappeared. 2. Heard he went to live with his aunt and uncle in California. Wonder whatever happened to him. Later that night, Hat meets up with others at the local cat dive. Pulls out a cigarette. Lights it. Takes a long deep drag. Closes eyes. Retracts claws. Deep exhale. Double quote. Where was I? Oh yes. So I'm lying there. Minding my own ducking business when the kids walk over. I'm tired. I've been out all night chasing up dinner so I think nothing of it. I have no energy so I figure. What? They pet me for a minute. It's all pretty kitty. So soft. 
Blah blah and off they go right? Well, you can imagine my surprise when lo and behold, the next thing I know someone is sticking a plastic wrapped finger in my cat dinner. The bar goes silent. Oh yeah. I it you not. Right in the cat dinner. But, someone turned the house into a damn vet without telling me. Little bastards couldn't even bother to buy me dinner. Call me pretty. And the plastic. Well let's just say it wasn't warm to the touch. If you get my drift. When I was 7, I counted up all my change in my piggy bank to open a bank account. My mom decided to exchange my coins with her bills, letting me grab it from her purse before I went to the bank. In her wallet was more money than I had ever seen in my life. $30, and I took an extra 20 on the sly. She didn't notice until the next day at work when she discovered it missing. She accused her co-worker who was in the midst of having a mental breakdown of stealing it. Who rightly flipped out over the accusation. Their boss tried to mediate but ended up firing the co-worker over losing control of their anger. I hear the story that evening in horror. And throw the $20 in the garbage. I never told a soul. My life during the 90s is a bit of a blur due to an undiagnosed mental disorder. But on one occasion. My buddy was eating a sandwich that had been cross contaminated with a foreign object due to my own clumsiness. He was so upset that I chose to remain silent about my involvement in the event. Things got out of hand when he filed a lawsuit against the company that supplied the canned tuna on his sandwich. I finally broke down and confessed that I put the screw in the tuna. Throw away. This past New Year's I went out with my cousin to go see laid back Luke at Pasha in Nick. We ended up getting really trashed because we had free drinks for a few hours there. We both took some molly after a few hours and we both started rolling and were feeling amazing. Next thing I know my cousin starts grinding on me. And I grabbed her and started dancing with her. She reached up and grabbed the back of my neck while turning her head and kissed me while we were dancing. Not having a care in the world. I tried reaching up under her dress without any hesitations. Not only did she not jump, she moved down onto my fingers. We continued this until the end of the night while also doing another molly each. After we left, we took a cab to the hotel that we were staying at. We ended up having six that night. Waking up in the afternoon the next day was really awkward as we no longer had the drugs and alcohol in our system. We talked about what happened. Agreed that it ended up being a really fun night. But that it could never happen again and that from then on we would never talk about it. Reposting this for the third time but I feel I need to share. Again. I once bare fisted a floater out of the itter at school. For respect. I had sex at 4 for the first time. Basically we were just playing doctor and we understood that me and her. Same age and height. Could have intercourse standing. So. Yes you can have an erection at 4. Yes I did penetrate her. I just inserted my D in her V2-3 times a day and left it there. We did this for two summers and then she had a vaginitis so she told the doctor about it. In fact the whole neighborhood knew it by the end of the summer. 25 years after we are still very embarrassed of this when we cross each other. When I was 12 I went to my grandpa's house and since he was a hunter at the time he had this huge ass stuffed bear but it was empty with a hole in its back. I thought it would be funny to climb inside and be a bear. So I got inside and as soon as I got inside my grandpa and some of his friends that had come over that day entered the room where the bear and I was. I waited for what felt like an hour as they discussed guns and bears in it. I got bored and being a 12 year old who had just discovered the wonders of fapping had the idea to rub one out inside the duck eyeing bear. Once I had finished the dark deed inside the bear I accidentally bumped into the wall the bear was near. Grandpa heard it and pulled me out with my pants around my legs and a boner in full view of his friends. We never spoke of it ever again. TL. DR I came inside a bear and my grandpa found me. When I was 5 I was hanging out with my brother, playing soccer. He fell. And being the huge wimp he was he went to get a band-aid. I decided to explore a little around our apartment. I heard some noises. And when I looked around the corner I saw two people beating the it of a younger kid. About 16. Then one of them said palabras filaments. Final words. And the teen said dios t bendiga. God bless you. He then made eye contact with me. They pulled out a gun and put a bullet in his head. They didn't see me until I started to cry. I went to therapy for years. And still wake up in the middle of the night in a cold sweat.